Okay, so thanks very much. So um, uh, for those of you who don't know me, as Kenneth says, it's Julian T. So uh, Compass Hotels Management is my little business uh, and I focus on uh, providing um, business strategy services really to predominantly independent hotels uh, and hospitality businesses. Um, and the basis of that has been over the last 30 years of experience, as, as Kevin mentioned. Um, the, the Compass bit, uh, just to avoid any confusion, nothing to do with Compass uh, catering, Compass hospitality, Compass anything else. Um, the Compass bit comes out of Compass Hotels Limited, uh, which was a company that I uh, operated for um, 15 years as managing director. Um, and uh, that was from about 2000 to 2015. And we owned a series of hotels and we operated others under management agreements for other people. Um, I'm going to look at dynamic business planning today, uh, just over the next 15 minutes. Uh, and if I can rattle through this particular presentation uh, and take any questions as Kevin mentioned in the in the format that he spoke of uh, just at the end of that, then be happy to do that. So without any further ado, uh, dynamic business planning. So today we shall look at uh, why do we need a business plan? Um, what does it contain? Why should it be dynamic? How do we make it dynamic? And the last piece is making it a live document, keeping that alive to review and appraise. Um, every business really does need a business plan, of course, but frankly, it is amazing how few have them. Uh, and as Benjamin Franklin said at one point, uh, to fail to plan is of course to plan to fail. And I would argue that in the current climate, that particular comment was never truer. So let's dive into the first bit and why do we need a business plan? Um, well. Your business plan, of course, will serve many purposes, and it's a direct descendant of the business strategy. And in simple terms, I would break that down as follows. So that business plan sets out the route map to achieve the business strategy, translates that strategy into bite-sized goals and objectives. That in turn drives communication with stakeholders and provides for measurement and performance. The breaking down into bite-sized goals and objectives, I think, is, is cardinal. Um, if you break things down into bite-sized chunks, leadership have an opportunity to delegate. They can communicate that out, and it allows other people to take those bite-sized chunks, to digest them, to interpret them, and to deliver against them. That communication through into stakeholders is important. And of course, if you've got those bite-sized chunks, you can start to provide measurement. And that measurement is important in normal times, and I'd argue will be important going forward as well. So the second topic was looking at what it contains. Um, and of course, it's going to vary from property to property and business to business. Um, but at the very, very least, I would recommend that it contains the following. So that would be your stated goals and objectives, of course, in your budgeted revenues and expenditure, in your comparative position to prior year, or potentially a prior year, let's face it, 2020 would not be the best benchmark, of course. Detailed analysis of each and every revenue center, each and every source of income, and the KPIs that are relevant to those revenue centers. Detailed analysis of each of the cost lines and a schedule of each element in that line. So I've seen uh, plans in the past which just list sales, marketing, and a number. Um, I would argue that you need um, a shopping list within those two particular categories alone. So you can see what you're spending or planning to spend uh, on your social media, on uh, even domain name registration, with which parties you're, uh, you're, you're sharing um, and which parties you're working with. At least if you can see that, you can start to evaluate the value of each and every one of those. And it does, it does you know, cause one or two people to wake up and, and, and look at what they're doing and how they're spending cash flow position. That is in green. We're going to come back to cash flow a little bit later. It's extremely important at present. Cash is without doubt king. Your resource plan, your sales plan per segment and marketing plan per segment, and your revenue strategies per segment. Those four are in red because those are the truly dynamic element. That's where you turn on, you turn off, you pull the levers. And effectively, of course, that's akin to your plan A, your plan B, and I would argue in this particular year and next year, it's your plan C as well. So there simply isn't time to deal with all of those subtopics in detail, but 
through the series of the Your Affordable Sales Team presentations, we have um, professionals who are speaking on those aspects. So uh, Robin Williams, uh, for example, uh, is picking up on uh, aspects of finance uh, on the 28th of uh, January. Um, and then uh, Claire, Martin, Kevin picking up on other aspects between sales, um, venue finding uh, and marketing. You might also want it to include your local competitor set, your national competitor set, international competitor set. Um, you know, if people have a choice of spending money, where are they going to spend money? They can spend it locally, nationally, or indeed internationally. So let's understand at least what the competitors are doing. And of course, that's going to vary for each type of business. And you need to look at what that is against each, uh, each revenue centre. SWOT analysis, I'm sure most are familiar with that, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, but also I would include a PEST or a PESTEL analysis, um, political, economic, social, um, technological factors, and the E and the L being environmental and legal. If you can cite that you know the issues that lie ahead and will impact your industry, your market, your locale, that's going to be an important aspect when you're presenting or when this plan is being presented to stakeholders. I appreciate that not everyone around the table is going to be uh, involved with putting together uh, a full business plan or indeed presenting a business plan, but a lot of people around the table will influence it um, and there will be some indeed that need to feed into certain aspects of it. We just dwell on that, on that pest analysis, that PESTEL analysis at the moment. We've got a, an interesting scenario coming up for the 31st of March. We've got debt and rent moratoriums due to end. We've got VAT deferred payments due to end. We've got VAT, I think, reverting to 20%. We've got C-bills and B-bill schemes ending um, and business rates relief ending as well. Furlough, of course, carries on until the end of April. But at the moment, and the Chancellor said yesterday he's not looking to review any of those other plans until March itself, that provides huge uncertainty for business. And so again, it's important to reflect that aspect in the plan. But make sure you've got your accreditations that you've achieved and COVID compliance measures. That's important and we'll show why that's important a little bit later on with the associated costs. And finally, if you have an investment plan and any disruption analysis, I would absolutely be including that at this point. So why should it be dynamic? Well. Frankly, none of us know what the immediate future holds. And if you find someone who does, if you could put them in touch with me, I'd be most grateful. So your plan has to reflect business uncertainty. Your stakeholders need to know that you've considered that uncertainty. They need to see that you've reflected changes in business circumstances. They need to have confidence in you that you're in control of all that you can be. And frankly, you can't be in control of everything at the moment. They need to be reassured that your customers can trust you. We're back to the COVID compliance measures. How can people book with you? Can they book with confidence? And they need to know that you as a team are on the same page. So with, when you're putting plans together, you need to be asking yourself, you know, does the plan stack up? Um, are my actions defensible? Uh, are my actions achievable? And frankly, do my actions uh, that I'm putting in place, are they consistent with my resourcing and my market position? Think about what you did in lockdown. Think of what you could replicate, what worked and what didn't work, what you could replicate if we have lockdown 4.0, um, or indeed what happens with the tier system. And of course, what might happen in winter 2021 when we get to that point at the end of the year. I'd also argue heavily that your team deserve to know that you've thought about all these aspects as well. At the end of the day, it's your team's livelihoods that are at stake here too. It's not going to be possible to save everybody's job. It's not going to be possible for every business to be saved. But where you are planning, you have a duty as a leader to think about your team. Rose is going to pick up on teams in her presentation later on today. So I won't speak more on that right now. So how do we uh, continue to make it dynamic? Well, you'll remember we had those four aspects that were in red. So it's the resourcing plan, it's the sales plan, it's the marketing plan, it's the revenue strategies. It's a fleet of foot approach to those aspects. And it's about having a playbook and scenario planning. So back in, uh, I think it was May 2020, uh, Black Sheep Restaurant in Hong Kong uh, produced a COVID-19 playbook. 
Um, and it, it went viral effectively. Um, if you don't have a copy of it, it's available online. I would find it and if not, I can send you a copy of it. But a lot of businesses looked at that and they used that for their own business planning. If this happens, then I will do. If this, then that. Um, and it is an extremely useful way um, to approach business planning uh, for this year and for next year. It at least shows that you've thought about the uncertainties um, that it could impact your business and that you're prepared. Think about your sales mix. Any change in sales mix will increase or decrease income. Certain costs can be uh, adjusted, of course, with that, but not all. And you need scenarios that look at that. Show the revenue streams associated with those sales mixes and show your market segmentation and always state your assumptions. Think about your sensitivity planning as well and under, understand the effects of plus or minus a pound on ADR, plus or minus a percentage point on occupancy, plus or minus a percentage point on cost of sales or GP, whichever way you look at it. And make sure that you are plotting those common uh, denominators those common uh, reporting lines of RevPAR, GoPAR, TrevPAR, and be able to show the effect on those metrics of a change in your sales mix. Think outside the box a little bit with measurements too. So again, this will all be uh, depending on the type of business that you're operating and what works and where. But if you look at your segmentation and you determine the most profitable sources of each revenue stream and focus on that, a laser focus on that, Effectively, it's Pareto's law, it's the 80-20 principle. 80% of your uh, revenue or 80% of your profit is coming from 20% of your market. Focus on that 20% at present. It comes back to cash flow, it comes back to cash being king. RevPag, revenue per available guest, F&B wise. RevPash, this was new to me, RevPash, revenue per available seat hour. Depends on what type of business you are, of course, but if you're breaking down that business plan into bite-sized chunks and you can measure, then you can break down into these sorts of metrics. These sorts of metrics might show where you need to focus energies. It might allow you to reward depending on, uh, on, on whether it's appropriate for your business or not. But these are useful metrics to look at. And I guess in that respect, you know, know what good looks like. And if it helps, work back from that position. So we're on to the last little bit, review and appraise. This needs to be a live document. It can't sit on the shelf. It has to feed into your forecasting and your forecasting frequency. And I would make that weekly. Have someone in the business take that down to cash flow level. Cash flow comes back in. It's a key skill. It needs to be right. It needs to be an accountant. It needs to be your, your FC within the business, or it needs to be an outsourced function if that's the way that it works. It's all spreadsheet based. If you need a tool for it, then, then the hotel forecast tool, for example, through the Russell Hotel Technology uh, platform is available. And that looks at a two year position. Um, I think it costs about 400 pounds or so, um, but it's, it's, it's an interesting tool. But it will take your PL down to cash flow. And of course you can be making cash, but you can still run out of money. State really clearly the proportions of your business on the books in your forecast, that confirmed provisional inquiry position. And frankly, if it isn't confirmed, I wouldn't be including it in the forecast, but I would within my forecast be showing where my provisional and my inquiry levels of business are and how they're moving. And that of course comes into plotting pace. Clearly state your assumptions in your forecast and keep a copy of it, don't overwrite it. Reference data in the marketplace that supports your position, you know, STR, hot stats, local business surveys, uh, Visit Britain forecasts, uh, BDRC sentiment reports, UK hospitality email updates, stuff that's supporting what you're doing is fundamental to evidence your position. You know, tourism recovery plan, all these things help. And of course, what's happening locally as well. And so finally, I'm not quite sure where I am on time, but finally, um, 2021 is going to be strange, isn't it? You know, it's definitely going to be a game of two halves. I can't see how it can be anything different to half one and half two. We're in lockdown 3.0 till the end of March. Maybe, maybe longer, maybe less. I'm not certain. But short term strategies are going to be built around business survival. Uh, and in that respect, objectives are going to be different. And some of that's going to be very, very different and alien to the team. Therefore, 
it is important to communicate the plan. It's important to adopt a dynamic approach to business, to be prepared for change and to understand that change needs planning. And finally, and you'd probably expect me to say this, wouldn't you? Don't be afraid to ask for help. And that's me. Thank you.